we watching Taking Stock and this really was a very volatile week that we are taking stock of. We spoke to Andrew Holland, CK Narayan of Growth Avenues now joins in. CK, hi, good to have you on the show. Uh, really, I mean, what are your charts indicating now? Is, is the market uh, mm -hmm. going to now respect that 8,000 mark that it did uh, in the previous correction? Or is, is that not an important number and uh, is the Nifty going to seek lower levels? Well, I think the 8,000 uh, number has certainly become uh, important in the minds of people because it has been bandied about quite a bit uh, over the channels, over the papers. Everywhere you hear of people talking about 8,000, so I think a uh, certain self-fulfilling prophecy there. As it nears that level, people are willing to cover their shots. Uh, coincident with that is the fact that we have uh, several, uh, let's say, technical parameters bunched up around those levels, which are indicative of supports forming in that zone. But uh, if you look at, uh, let's say, the technical theory part, what it says is that if, an, if any area is deemed to be a support, it should uh, do its job by sending stock prices up. And in this case, the index price should have been sent higher. Now, what we are seeing here is probably the index with uh, clear intent to bottom, but uh, which is not being accompanied by an equivalent amount of willingness to go up from that level. We have had this, uh, you know, couple of attempts to go higher, and we saw that for this week also. We've reached up somewhere near the 8,300 levels, but uh, the amount of fresh buying which needs to actually come in at that level, come in at the higher level, showing that people are convinced, traders are convinced that the market would sustain higher, that is somehow missing. And in the absence of uh, that adventure spirit to, you know, get into stocks at a higher level and sustain that holding, uh, the market sentiment continues to remain pretty tentative, which is leading to retests of the lower levels. On the charts, we have, uh, you know, two successive weeks of very hesitant-looking candles for the weekly. And this is quite similar. It's coincidental, but exactly at the same region of around 8250 or 8200 thereabouts was where we had seen exactly similar candles mm. back in December when again the market was in the throes of a decline. So we do have similarity in terms of price patterns or the candlestick patterns from back in December and again now in the month of May. And uh, if you recall from December it actually went up and did fairly well for itself. Uh, will we have a repeat of that? I think what it needs is uh, some dose of good news. Now, where is that good news going to come from? That is anybody's guess. Can it be, uh, let's say, uh, the interest rate cut uh, in the first week of June? I don't know, because uh, unlike the last two, last two occasions when the rate cut was there, this time around, the polls seem to indicate that 80% of the people are already expecting that there would be a rate cut. Yeah. So, will the market oblige when there is such a high level of expectation? I don't know. The jury is out on that. I'm staying by the sideline watching what the market really intends to do. Unless there is a specific show of strength, I wouldn't really want to pitch my tent on the bull side. But then there is also a clear intent to bottom, so I don't want to pitch my tent with the bears either. So, I'm a bit of a stag at the moment. Okay, so that's confused me a little more uh, than I was before we started the show. But uh, Dr. Narayan, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, can we talk about individual stocks now? Um, although the headline index may be giving you confusing signals, what about stock ideas? Uh, any buy ideas that you'd want to give us for next week? Yeah, I think a uh, few green shoots are visible certainly even in a market such as this. I think one of the stocks which, uh, you know, reacted very, very well to uh, favorable input news was Bajaj Auto. It went up with substantial volume, substantial momentum on the day when the auto numbers were announced and has managed to sustain that, uh, you know, that uh, amount of gain through slightly tumultuous times since then. So I think Bajaj Auto in the region of, let's say, between 21, uh, 40, 50 up to around 2170, I think it it would represent a fairly uh, low risk entry point for somebody who's wanting to go long in this market and looking at a quality stock which has a reason to get into it. Second stock that I would look at would probably be Reliance. 
It's been an underperformer for a long time, but I think ever since that low was recorded uh, a few weeks ago, and we had a fairly spirited rise uh, to which we have had a pullback, it's seemingly doing a fairly admirable job of holding on to the support in the region of about 860 to 875 and seeking to build on its earlier show of strength. I would be looking up to Reliance to lead the market out of its current morass and it has, uh, you know, the weightage to do that. So Bajaj, Reliance are two stocks that I would certainly take a look at. Pharma as a pack has been uh, on both both sides of the fence, one of the stocks within Pharma Pack, which has been pretty resilient to declines and very quick to make a comeback, uh, would be Arabindo Pharma. It is into a bit of consolidation. I would look for a slight upside breakout on short-term charts, and if if uh, such a breakout was indeed available, I would be quite inclined to go long in Arabindo as well. Okay, uh, Dr. Narayan, that's uh, about uh, the slightly larger cap stocks. Any any mid cap that looks like is uh, you know breaking out or breaking down and is worth watching out for next week? Well, in the mid cap space, actually, it's a little bit interesting because you are seeing clearly a bit of outperformance in the small cap and mid cap area. They have not really followed the market down, and if you see week on week, also the. Uh, you know, the indices have underperformed uh, the, uh, the overall market to the downside. I would think uh, looking at something like Voltas would be an interesting bet at that uh, place. Uh, Voltas has been uh, down to about 265 recently, has, uh, you know, made, clawed its way back to near the breakout point near 290, and I would most certainly watch. Uh, Voltas as a, you know, as a kind of uh, possible play in the mid-cap space in the next week or two. Okay, that's a whole host of ideas that you've left us with. Thanks uh, so much for that, Dr. Narayan. You have a good day. Well, uh, that's the word coming in from both the technical and the fundamental experts. Uh, looks confusing, but by and large, a base perhaps has been put in place at that 8,000 level on the Nifty. Before we end the show, let's... Um, Take a look at the key events to watch next week. Our colleague Mangalam Malu joins us now. Mangalam. And thanks a lot for that. Among the key events to watch next week will be a whole host of heavyweight earnings and a couple of global events as well that will affect the markets world over. We have on the 18th of May results like HSIL, Somani Ceramics and Asian Paints from building products. Uh, the earnings will give us a peek into how consumer demand is shaping up. On the 19th May, Tata Power, Colgate Palmolive and ENIL from the media space report their fourth quarter earnings. On the 20th May, it's a busy day on the research desk with DLF, Tata Steel, Bajaj Finance, Bharat Forge and Lakshmi Machine. Machine works releasing their numbers. In fact, globally, we'll also keep an eye on the Chinese HSBC flash manufacturing PMI and the US FOMC meeting minutes will be released that day. On the 21st of May, uh, that's a Thursday, we have results like Ikra, Britannia, Bajaj Auto, Voltas, Z Entertainment, CESC, and All Cargo Logistics. They report their earnings, and Germany and France globally release their flash manufacturing PMI, and uh, US also releases their unemployment claims data on that Thursday. On the 22nd May, the big weight, heavy weight from the banking industry, SBI releases its fourth quarter earnings, CA Tires and NBCC also report their numbers on Friday. With that, back to you. Alright, thanks Mangalam for that. So those are the key earnings to watch out for next week. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of Taking Stock. See you again on Monday.